Good morning. It is a brand new week. It is the day before Tuesday, which is when we do the edition of the conversation. But then we broke away from that for a couple of yeah. weeks and we've been conversating all through it. And ironically, the series that we have been uh, breaking out of the Tuesday mold ends before the Tuesday. So we actually have to have some sort of conversation, not in James chapter three yeah. for tomorrow's devotion as well. I don't know what's uh, happening so, on Tuesday now. Yeah, uh, we've, it's, we've jumped it, the shark. It's it's <laughs> different. It's different. We have broke 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 broken broken the mold. Broke. We let's get right into Something, James yeah. chapter three. <laughs> hey, if you're if you're watching and you have enjoyed these, do me a huge favor and comment. Um, that is what we're looking for. Thank you to everybody on YouTube. We get comments on there, and uh, I appreciate everybody adding in and saying what they say and. Um, appreciate that everybody's joined us. Facebook, we would appreciate the same thing. Uh, share it, like it, whatever. Uh, it is helpful, and we appreciate that. James chapter 3, um, 17, and then we're going to end with 18. has a really great thought in it, Michael. Let me read it, and then we'll discuss it, all right? But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere, and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. What a what a, a cool thought. Um, yeah. Michael, let me ask you a question. <laughs> this is gonna put you on the spot. <laughs> have you ever been have you ever been in a fist fight? You enjoy this too much. <laughs> um, <clears throat> does it does it qualify as a fist fight if I was only on the receiving end? Or is that no, be yeah, see, no. that's it. That's it. <laughs> see, I, I know you uh, quite well, and uh, you, you know me. Neither one of us are, are real fighters. Um, yeah. I, I don't think that we would qualify there. I uh, was in a fist fight. I've shared the story a hundred times. I was in a fist fight with my older brother, and, uh, and uh, he had much longer arms. I was a short guy. Uh, there were a lot of punches to the face that happened uh, with him hitting me. He went out of my room. I slammed the door in his face, and it ripped his toenail off. And then he had three surgeries over the next three years on that toenail. So uh, I won the fight. You won the uh, fight, it's on yeah. Record. I've <laughs> declared it. I won the fight. It took many years, but I won the fight. So yeah. Um, I, th this is what I think of. Um, th this is what I think of. I, I don't tend to get in a whole lot of verbal altercations or fights or anything like that. Um, because of the fact that I believe that when we implement wisdom and think through these ideas of what's wise, um, I think that what the Bible is talking about is that you sow um, what you 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 reap what you, you sow. What you sow, yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm also not I'm not a fighter and I'm not a farmer. So, <laughs> but uh, you you reap what you sow. So what you put in is what is yeah. produced in your life. And in that kind of the idea of what's being talked about here. Yeah, they. And it's interesting when you look at it because we're talking about something that that for for us. Um, you know, we generally think of, you know, you reap what you sow in terms of, you know, tangible things, not, and I don't mean farming, but I mean, we, we think of it as like, if you put effort into something, you will reap benefits from it. We mentally, we want to come back to what are the tangible benefits we're going to, we're going to reap. Um, and you know, we don't, and, and so you would, you would say in that context, if you sow peace, you're going to reap peace. That's, that's, what's going to happen. But it doesn't say that here. It says a harvest of righteousness. Right. Uh, and and you know we, you know, and by those who make peace. And I, I like this scripture, and I like it for for a number of reasons. Uh, one, it harkens back to the Sermon on the Mount, where you know, in the Beatitudes, this is, you know, blessed are the peacemakers. Uh, and I always think of you know, the, the and the best discussion I heard on this one time was blessed are the peacemakers, not the peacekeepers. And there's a fundamental difference. Uh, and it ties to your idea of sowing and reaping, uh, because you peace peace keepers just try to try to spackle over everything. You know, you want to you want you want it to look good. You don't want anybody to see that it's bad, but it could be rotten underneath. You know, you yeah. with the idea of whitewashed tombs. You know, that's full of rottenness. Um, but when you talk about sowing peace, you are making an investment. You are you are not only you're trying to make things appear good. You are trying to sow goodness. That's what that's what makes you a peacemaker, or a, a peacemaker instead of a peacekeeper. 
But how is it that we that we reap a harvest of righteousness from that? Uh, you know, how do you how do you sow peace and harvest righteousness? How do those two go together? Well, righteousness is the is trueness, straightness. Um, and and so I think that what is being taught here is that when um, purity, peacefulness, gentleness, open reason, full of mercy, good fruits, impartial and sincere, when those things are labored after, uh, the result is um, this this idea that God wants for us. You know, the Genesis, uh, the, the Bible Project has such a, a great video that they, they just did of um, the beginning in Genesis and talking about God okay. coming out of the chaos. And so the chaos is the disorder, and it feels a lot like what we're experiencing in 2020. Uh, it's really, really easy to find chaos in your life. And, and you can... What I've experienced is that um, in talking to people and in my own life, um, I can experience chaos and then it not necessarily be chaos from the place that I'm actually experiencing it. But I've realized that I have carried over what I'm experiencing over here and it's it's and it's it's happening in this area of my life. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what it's speaking to. If we're really aiming at wisdom uh, the result will be righteousness. That's what God desires. He doesn't desire chaos. He desires righteousness. Chaos um, is the disorder. Uh, righteousness is the order and the, the good. And so the peace comes in that chaos doesn't give peace, but righteousness gives peace. Is that a, is that a proper yeah. connection, you think? I, I, yeah, I think it ties, it ties back really well when you look at your your sowing and kind of go back to the farming idea here you're sowing peace and all of these characteristics of wisdom that we have been unpacking over the last many days are are the the ingredients that go in you know of wisdom and and again that harvests righteousness and you contrast that then against the earthly wisdom and the, that's de earthly and demonic and yeah. those things are, are the antithesis of all of these characteristics we've discussed about wisdom, but what do you harvest when you, you know, when you sow those things, you know, when you're, you, it's, it's not peace, it's not yeah. righteousness. Disorder all, in every vile practice is what it James is. Tells us. Yeah. It's so he, he very clearly says, and you, so you get that comparison and contrast in 16 to, to verse 18 with what you yeah. read in, in comparison. And we, you're right. The, the thing to think about, and I, to me, and, it, and I, I don't want it to be because it feels very discouraging. You look at 2020 and where we're at. I think the encouragement for us is that in the beginning, and it's a great point, God took chaos and created order with the intent of righteousness. So yeah. if he took the complete disorder that existed and created everything from that, from out of that, what can he do with 2020? You know, it My, feels uh... chaos to us, but what can he do? My son and I were going somewhere, um, and uh, he was in in one of his um, moods where he was he was very chatty, and he said to me, uh, in the middle of sh strung together with something about Minecraft and uh, fire and who knows what else, a hamster maybe, um, but he said to me, uh, "Man, Dad, 2020's been a real bad year, hasn't it?" Uh, and I instantly knew that the only reason that he has a context for that is because of what I've verbalized out of my mouth, because 2020 <laughs> hasn't been a bad year for him. He hasn't experienced yeah. you know, yeah. much of anything. Yes. But but then I, I called into question what I what he had heard us say. And I said uh, I had to say, no, it, it really hasn't been because, yes, 2020 has been a chaotic, crazy, bad year in general. But if I'm looking at my life, yeah. man alive, it has not been that bad. And God has blessed me and kept me. And I think that that's exactly what it's talking about here. In the middle of everything falling down around you, um, wisdom keeps us, even in those times, in the place that we're supposed to be because God desires yeah. for us peace, not chaos. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that at the end of the day is is where we need to fix our eyes and and where our hope is because it's out of out of chaos he made all good things yeah. and he can take our chaos and our you know and even even our bad days and he can turn that into something amazing and yeah. for us 
and, and again, we just celebrated Thanksgiving. So, you know, reflecting on that, you know, no matter how we feel about how disruptive life is right now, there are still so many more things for us to be thankful for each and every day uh, that, rather than to get down about at this point. Isn't it ironic this year alone that Thanksgiving comes at the end of the year? Mm. Um, let's experience all the bad that we've experienced so that in the end we can look and be thankful for it. And, and um, still be thankful. And, and, and still, be still thankful. have so much to be thankful for. Uh, yeah. Which just highlights, to me, highlights how much we have been blessed where we are, and you know, and and for believers is I think should we should be feel a little taken to task for our attitude and our demeanor, and and you know we should be more joyful even yeah. in the midst of of the chaos. Let me pray and finish this up. Thank you, Michael. Great yeah. series, great time together. I've I've really Good. enjoyed it. So yeah. thank uh, you. Let's pray together, right? God, we're grateful for who you are, for how great you are, and um, God, for the fact that you desire for us peace. Uh, you you want us in the way of righteousness, not because it adds anything to you or what you're doing if we're in the way of righteousness, but because you, you genuinely, sincerely, and partially desire the best for us, the way that we've talked about God in, in this series. And so we need that wisdom, that wisdom that is from that place, um, that is in that same vein, so that we can make the decisions that lead to the paths of righteousness that are sown by those who desire peace and is lived out in peace. God, thank you for, in the middle of the chaotic year of 2020, how we have experienced peace in the work that you've done in our lives. We give you the glory for that. It's you that takes chaos and orders it and fixes it, and it, it, it's not our efforts, God. So thank you so much for all that you do, and we love you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Right. Thanks a lot, and have a good day, Michael. Cheers.